Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy S21 FE and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So to get started uh, there is going to be a bunch of them located strictly in just the display section. So let's just jump over there. So display and I'm going to start with the dark mode now. Normally you just have the toggle on and off dark mode uh, which whatever it's it's there as majority of the other android have it right now but what you do also have is the dark mode settings right here which allows you to set it up as a schedule so the device will switch between dark and light mode on its own picking the uh, or picking the one that you chosen for the specific time as an example so as the case best case to use for this in my opinion would be having it set to light mode during the daytime and set, having it set to dark mode during the night time so when you're looking at your phone during night maybe you just woke up uh, you can light up the device and not be actually blasted with a super bright white background so that's super nice and uh, when it comes down to like during the daytime i go outside dark mode is a little bit harder to see in the direct sunlight so light mode will be way better for those purposes so i would recommend you to set it up like that now moving on to the next one, it's going to be the motion smoothness, which you can change right here. We have it set to high. Uh, basically what it is, is just refresh rate. Uh, high means the device looks uh, a little bit better in terms of like how the content looks like on it when you scroll up and down or do some kind of quicker actions on it. While standard will be just a typical middle of the run, like any kind of other device with uh, a little bit better battery life. So you sacrifice a little bit better battery for better visuals or you get more battery but get a little crappier visuals. Now this uh, only extends to animations uh, of like scrolling or just anything that is in motion. And you do have a two images right here to showcase the difference between those two. Now obviously those images are significantly exaggerated and the difference isn't necessarily that great but as you can see how it will affect it. standard just looks more choppy uh, high looks smoother that's basically as complex as it gets so anyway let's move on to the next one which is the screen mode now this is samsung so i do consider this as a necessity at least uh, in my preference because screen mode uh, on vivid the images here are just a little bit too overdone specifically if you look at this image right here this just looks ridiculous in my opinion. If you also max out the brightness, it gets even more wild. So I personally myself prefer to have it set to natural, which tones down the colors, reduces the saturation and makes the display look for some a little bit more dull, but personally I do prefer it. Like if you look at the vivid, the orange is right here. They, they're just way too orange, grapefruit. Uh, looks like it's radioactive basically so it's a little bit too overdone obviously in certain cases it might look good like right here when it comes down to the aurora uh, looks fine uh, i mean fine meaning looks better as a saturated compared to natural which like i said looks a little bit more toned down but at the end of the day i do prefer to have the natural making it look a little bit less colorful but a little bit more realistic anyway moving on to the next option it's going to be the uh, touch sensitivity which again is under the display like almost everything so we have right here now this is strictly for the people that will be using some kind of tempered glass on their screen and you have experience some kind of like weirdness to your display where it doesn't feel as responsive as it used to so for those people just enable the touch sensitivity and this will increase the touch sensitivity to accommodate for the tempered glass. And yeah, that's basically it. And moving on to a couple options that we have right here at the bottom. Uh, those aren't necessarily located under the display, but they do, uh, they do move us there. So we have side key. And if you click on it, it will allow you to change what the side key actually does. So double press, uh, quick launch camera. Uh, we have uh, press and hold. We have wake up Bixby. Um, no one uses Bixby. Sorry. So we're gonna go back to the normal power options because at least that's where I prefer. 
But when it comes down to just the double press, you can, for instance, turn off the double press so it doesn't launch camera. Or you can set up a custom application of your choice. Now, obviously, there isn't many applications right here to choose from. That is because I don't have any application installed. If you install some kind of application, it will show up here, no problem. So just pick whatever you want. As an example, I will pick, let's go with the clock. And now when I double, oops, try that again. Now when I double press, as you can see, it launches my clock. Okay, so going back, uh, there was one last thing in here that I wanted to show you, which is the navigation bar. For some reason, Samsung comes with uh, the normal buttons at the bottom instead of the gesture navigation enabled by default. Uh, a little bit messed up there, but oh well. So there we go, gesture navigation. I'm, I, I expect that a lot of people prefer to use that instead of the outdated buttons, just because it is much easier to use those, much more convenient to, for instance, go back from the side instead of trying to use your thumb to break it and reach at the bottom of the screen. So yeah, anyway, now moving on to some other things outside of the display, I'm gonna go into sounds. So we have sounds and vibration right here. And we're gonna start with the separate up sound. So what this allows you to do, if I can actually find it, go separate up sounds. Uh, when enabled, you can select what kind of application will be using what device so as an example right there we have said that uh, youtube and chrome are well, selected and i can choose for those applications to right now play sound either through bluetooth only or through phone only and they will always play through those uh through whatever you selected right here so you can have two different apps and those apps will be playing adds two different on two different devices now i don't think you can actually play two different things at the same time but as an example you can have spotify to always play on your earbuds while you have uh, youtube that can play only on the phone speakers and you can lock it to that kind of configuration now moving on to the next thing uh this is honestly more for you to test around uh, i believe this would probably assuming it works with headphones would most likely work better with headphones uh, it's the uh, it's the Adobe Atmos so let's see it somewhere let's see where it was there we go some quality and effects so you have Adobe Atmos when you enable it you also have the Adobe Atmos for games whatever uh, if it's if it's locked to just the speakers uh, don't expect anything to change uh, this is gonna be just as garbage as it gets uh, but if it works with headphones you can just toggle it on and off when you're listening to music and see if it affects it then you might get a little bit of a better experience now obviously it sounds so it is kind of also up to preference and last thing that i wanted to show you also in here is the adapt sound now this is one of the better options on here which uh, i think i only seen only on samsung devices now what it allows you to do before i actually get into it this only works uh, with headphones you cannot set it up right now with without them so it won't do it won't even go through the setup if you don't have any kind of headphones connected so just thought i would just mention that so anyway what this option does is allows you to configure equalizer specifically for your hearing now we do have a couple preset ones right here so we have under 30 30 60 6, and 60 and over um, for me if i would set it up uh, because i did go through it uh, set up of the sound uh, under uh, under 30 and uh, and my custom one that i created for myself are basically identical not, i couldn't really tell any difference between them so would be close to accurate because well i am a little bit over 30 but close enough so yeah um now when going through the setup of this if you're planning to do the test my hearing i it does require a fairly quiet environment and obviously your headphones and what it will do is play really uh, faint sounds and all you need to do is select if you can hear them or not 
so that's basically as complex as it gets and based on your choices it will choose uh, or customize the equalizer to your hearing and in my opinion it does make a big difference in terms of uh, the uh, audible difference in terms of uh, audible difference when it comes down to listening to music so for me music usually sounded a little bit better which because of that I, I strongly recommend going through this so anyway this would conclude the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to share and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching